There's a constant debate among devs at the moment is how good actually are coding agents? And the debate usually has two sides. It has the side that says, no, coding agents suck. I hate AI coding. And the other side of the debate says, no, you're just using them wrong. This is a skill issue. Now I can see both sides of this debate, but if there is a skill issue that I see most often with devs, it is not thinking enough about the context window. The context window is the main constraint that most AI coding agents face these days. And honestly, most devs don't even really know what it is or how it impacts how you use these coding agents. If that's you, you have come to the right place. We are gonna explain everything you need to know as a user of coding agents about what the context window is and how it impacts coding agent performance. So let's get started right away by talking about what actually makes up the context window. The context window is the entire set of input and output tokens that the LLM sees. The input tokens are the things that you pass to the LLM. You might pass it a system prompt, which is some instructions to say to the LLM what it should do, and maybe a user message to initiate the conversation. And then once you've sent that, the LLM starts streaming back some assistant messages, which are the output tokens. And and the input plus the output tokens make up the entire context window. As the conversation grows longer, let's say you're chatting with Claude or ChatGPT, the more input and output tokens are going to be in that context window. So we usually talk about the context window kind of growing or the number of tokens that you're spending inside that context window growing. And eventually it's gonna grow so, so long that you will hit a limit. Each model has a hard-coded limit which is set by the model provider. And let's say here you pass too many input tokens you've got a system message, a user message, and 100 more messages, let's say. Well, you will get an error from the LLM provider saying you have hit the limit of the context window. You might even hit this with a single super long message. Let's say you're uploading some documents, or you're asking the LLM to transcribe a video or an enormous image. And this limit of the context window is usually described in tokens. If you don't know what a token is, then you can check out my YouTube video on tokens, which I'll link here. Now you can actually hit the limit while generating tokens too. For instance, you can just be chatting with the system like this and it will maybe tell you an extremely long output which overruns its context window and it will just stop because the context window has been hit. You can take a look at models.dev to check out the different context window limits and lots of other information about different models. For instance, Claude Haiku 4.5, if we zoom over here, we can see a context window limit of 200,000 tokens. Down here, we can see a limit of 2 million tokens. Let's take a look at that. Boom, 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 boom. And we have Gemini 2.5 Pro. Gemini kind of as a selling point has really large context windows, but as we'll see in a second, uh, bigger is not always better. We'll see too that there are some models here like Quen Math Plus, which only have about 4,000 tokens inside here. So smaller models and older models too often have much smaller context window limits. So why do these models impose context window limits at all? Why not just allow infinite amount of text to be passed through the model? Well, some of it is to do with the constraints of the architecture of the model. LLM processing is expensive and so adding more text and more context window means you're using more memory per process. But also the larger the context window, the more performance degrades. In other words, the more information that you give a model, the worse it's going to perform. This is true across tiny models all the way up to very, very large models. And the reason for that is that all models suffer from a problem of retrieving information from their own context. This is the classic needle in a haystack problem. If you have one piece of information in a huge big bloated context and you're trying to get the LLM to refine that and take that, do something with it, then it's going to really struggle. This is especially true for information that's in the middle of a conversation. For instance, I've put this very unscientific graph here where we have the impact on the output here and the position in conversation. What happens is that for really long chats here where we have each individual message represented by this little circle, the information in the middle of the chat is going to be less prioritized by the LLM. So the stuff at the start and the stuff at the end is deemed most important by the attention mechanism that the LLM uses. This is not really intended behavior, it's just an emergent property of how these systems are designed. So this is really, really important when you're doing AI coding. The stuff at the start of the conversation is going to have most impact and the stuff at the end is going to have the most impact. But all the big bloated stuff in the middle is not necessarily going to impact the result that strongly. It still has an impact of course, but much less than the stuff at the start and the end. And this mimics human behavior 
behavior too. If you've ever heard of primacy bias and recency bias, you will probably remember the start of this video and the end of the video better than the guff in the middle. However, the shorter the context window, the fewer lost in the middle problems you're gonna come across. Models just do better with less, more focused information, just like humans do. This means that regularly clearing your coding agent chat will refresh the agent's memory and clear its context window, making for much better performance when you actually go to use it. Let's actually dive into a coding agent that I use, Claude Code. I've run a command called context here and we can see the context usage that we've used up. We've used 95K tokens out of 200K limits. This is on Sonnet 4.5, which has a 200K context window limit. Nearly 8% of it is just on the system prompt here and 40% is on these messages, so 77K tokens. That is the content of the conversation that I've run through so far. Now, if I had some work to do that was related to the chat thread that I've just done, which I think is just sort of uh, reworking some documentation, then 105k tokens of free space, that feels pretty good to me. But I would definitely start getting scared once I only had about, let's say, 50k tokens left, at which point I would run clear, which clears the conversation history and frees up the context window. You do have an alternative in Claude Code here, which is to compact the conversation. If I run this, it clears the conversation history and creates a summary of what happened. In other words, it takes all of these messages and just creates a smaller message out of them. In theory, that will pull us further away from the context window limit and we'll get fewer lost in the middle problems. However, this does take some time. And of course you're using an LLM to generate a summary. So you are spending tokens here. It's already taken about a minute doing this and it's finally done. And we can press control zero to see the full summary. We can see it's created a pretty lengthy summary of the conversation we just had without any of like the files that it's pulled in or anything like that. But it preserves some of the intention, some of the vibes, and it's like a sort of mini rules file just for this conversation. If we run context again, we can see that we now have 90% of free space. And the messages, instead of like 70k tokens, whatever they were before, is now only 4k. So compacting is useful when you want to preserve the vibes of a conversation. But clear is should be your default when you just want to clear it, go back to a blank slate, and keep going from there. Whenever you're working with a coding agent, you really do need full transparency, full understanding of what's happening in your context window at any time. I want to give you a word of warning here too about MCP servers. MCP servers are super attractive because they allow you to plug and play with different pre-made tool sets out there in the ecosystem, but they can bloat your context incredibly rapidly. You might have a conversation here where like a third of it is system prompt, you know, a big chunk of it is MCP tools just from a couple of MCP servers, and then just a few extra stuff is messages. So I tend to be extremely, extremely cautious about adding MCP servers to my setup because I know how important having a lean context window is. I also don't tend to write very, very large cursor rules or Claude rules because again, I'm just so scared of these lost in the middle problems. And as a result, I really enjoy working with AI coding agents and I get really decent performance out of them, I think. And hopefully if you take on this paranoia that I've developed, you'll get great results too. So that's what a context window is. It is the input and output tokens that make up the entire thing that the LLM can see at any one time. Every LLM comes with a context window limit, a hard-coded limit set by the model provider, which is basically how many tokens they think the LLM can reasonably handle. All LLMs are prone to lost in the middle problems, where stuff in the middle of the context window ends up being deprioritized. And so when you're assessing an LLM, you shouldn't just look at how big the context window is, you should look at how well it retrieves information from its context window. For instance, in April, Meta announced Llama 4 Scout, which if I hide myself is just down here and it has a 10 million context window limit. It turned out after people actually played with it, it suffered from really bad lost in the middle problems. And even though you could feed it that information, it wouldn't really do anything with it. So I hope you have a better understanding of the limits of these models and how you can work around those limits and understand them better to get better results. If you want to go deeper into LLMs, then I have just put out a AI SDK crash course. This is a crash course for Vercel's AI SDK, which I think is the perfect way to get started with LLMs if your primary language is TypeScript. For just a couple more days, you can get this for 99 bucks. So head to aihero.dev if you want to learn more. Thanks so much for following along. I love talking about this stuff and I really think this is valuable information. If there's anything LLM based that you want me to cover, especially talking about it in the context of TypeScript, let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching and I will see you very soon.